Hello everyone, I am Anmol Panda from the Programming Club of IIT Madras. Uh, so today we'll be discussing uh, the solutions to code forces uh, around 807, which was a division two held few hours back. So I was able to solve problems A, B and C and uh, we'll be discussing the solutions for the same. So let's get started. Let's move on to problem A. So problem A uh, is a fairly easy problem. That's why it's problem A. So you've been given uh, two n people. You need to arrange them in two rows uh, such that the jth person of the back row must be at least x units taller than the jth person of the first row for all j belonging to 1 to n. So how will you do this? So since you need to arrange them in two rows and uh, the smaller people uh, need to be in the front row and the taller people need to be in the back row because uh, you want the back row should be higher than the uh, front row for every index. So it would be optimal if you keep all the tall people uh, in the back row and the shorter people in the front row. What I'm trying to say is you take these two n people, you uh, sort their heights in ascending order and the first n people's heights, they'll come in the first row and the last n people heights, they'll come in the second row. Now uh, we need to think about how you're going to arrange these people such that, you know, the worst case also, uh, if it's possible, it can hold. So we can just maybe draw something. Yeah, so uh, say 1, 2, 3, 4 are uh, 1, 2, 3 and so on till n are the people in the first row. These are not the heights. These are, uh, sorry, these are not the heights. They are the indices of the persons. Like after you sort them, you'll be sorting them in uh, a1, a2, so on till a2n. So this is a1, this is a2, this is a3 and so on till an. Now we need to arrange people in this back row. Now, my claim is that the people, the person who will come above n in the worst case scenario, if it's possible, uh, then 2n. Uh, the, the tallest person will come above uh, this, above the person n. Now, why uh, will this be true? Now, suppose the difference between the tallest person and this is less than x. Say h2n minus hn is less than x. This is what I'm saying. So hi minus hx will also be less than x. Uh, hi minus hn will also be less than x for all i. The reason is that h2n is the largest height possible. And the difference between the tallest person and that person is only less than x. So difference between uh, any other person and that specific person will always be less than x. So, uh, if there exists a scenario, then uh, it would be one of the scenarios where 2n is coming up. And uh, similarly, now you have n minus 1 elements out here. And we can do the same thing again. Now these 1, 2, 2 n minus 1 elements are also in sorted order. So you take the n minus 1th index. Now the person above this should be also the tallest within the people you have left. That is h of n plus 1, n plus 2, n plus 3 and so on till 2n minus 1. So, since we have sorted them, this will be 2n minus 1 and so on till n plus 1. The person above 1 will be n plus 1 and then there will be people between them. Now, uh, it's not necessary that this will be the only arrangement. There might be multiple arrangements. Say something like, uh, say the bottom row elements are all 1s, okay? And the top row elements are, say, some... Uh, huge number say 100, 150, 160 and so on and x is say very small number say 2 or 3. So you can keep these top elements in any arbitrary order that is that will hold true. But this case will always come if there exists a case that is my point. Because if this case does not come then no case will come that is what we have tried, we have proved out here. So uh, we need to check whether this case is possible or no for the array. So uh, the question gave that the jth person must be at least x units taller 
सो h of n n plus one minus h of one must be greater than equal to x. If it is less than x, then it's directly no. Or else uh, you keep doing that for all the indices. Okay, so we can look at the code for this. So uh, I take input k is basically x. I multiply n by two because there are two n elements for input. Read a comma n. I've just written the function above to take the array's input. I sort the elements. And a of i plus k is uh, greater than this element plus x is uh, one plus x is greater than n plus one. Then it's not possible. So that that is what we do for all indices. If a of i plus k is a of i plus n by two, now our n is changed. Now n is multiplied by two by this step. So then we print no, or else if I for All indices, uh, this condition does not come, which means you can have valid arrangement, and you print yes. Okay, uh, so yeah, that was problem A. So we can move on to problem B. Now problem B is uh, also a uh, uh, you know greedy problem. So we can uh, so you can read the question. You have to select. You have a Row of n rooms. The ith room has non-negative dust level. That is, there are no negative numbers. You have to make a one two. You have to basically make the first n minus one element zero uh, by doing some as uh, operation. And what the operation is this? What you do is you take two l uh, two indices and you decrease the first index by one and the increase the second index by one and provided that. All the elements between them are strictly greater than zero. So, say for example, your row, say your array is one, two, three, six, and you choose maybe this index and this index. So, what you would do is you would reduce the first index by one, and you would increase the second index by uh, you by one, and everything else remains unchanged. So, this is the operation that you can perform. Now, what you are supposed to do is you are supposed to make the first n minus one element zero. So here, uh, non-negative dash level, so zeros are allowed. But let us consider a case where there are no zeros. Okay, we will come to the zeros case, but let us initially consider a case where there are no zeros. So uh, maybe some array, something like three, four, one, six, two. Just taking a small array so that I can show what I am trying to say. So what we need to do is we need to make these elements zero by applying the operation. So we know that nothing here is zero. So what I would do is that I would just take my i to be one and j to be n because there are no zeros in between. I can suck. I can properly apply the operation between these two indices. Okay. So. When I take i equals one and j equals n, what would happen is my first value would decrease by one. So now my array would become something like two, four, one, six, and uh, three. You do the same thing again. Now in this case, you do the same thing thrice so that this becomes zero and this uh, gets added up by three. So you'll get a five out here, and everything else remains the same out here because uh, the operation is just between the two indices. Nothing else is affected. So uh, since there are no zeros between these two things, we are able to do that. And here the number is three, so you are doing it three times. Suppose the number is k, so you do it k times. So you have now you have made the first element zero. Now what you do is you do the same thing from the second element. You take the second element because after this, uh, after making the first element zero, our array would be something like zero, four, one, six, and five. Now what you do is you take this as your i and let this also be your j. Now we know by our initial assumption that there are no zeros here, so you can do this operation again. So you do this operation four times again. You make this zero. You add this by four. Now the last element can actually be anything, so you don't have to care about the last element. It's not like you're Adding uh, values out there, so you have to worry about that. It can be arbitrarily anything. Your work is just to make this first n minus one element zero. So 
you make the second element zero the same way you take the i equals this and j equals this you apply the operation the second element number of times and you can make it zero similarly for the third element fourth element and so on till n minus 1th element so for the first element uh, now in an array there is zero index six so i'll just take the first element to be a of zero so suppose the first element in the array is a of zero then you need to apply the operation a of zero number of times because at every operation you are decreasing the value by one so a of zero you have to uh, reduce one a of zero times to make it zero now you have to make the second element zero so second element is a of one and you are reducing one 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 you do that a of one number of times to get it non zero and similarly dot 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 you do it for n minus 1 elements and the n minus 1 element will have the index n minus 2 now this say this is our s okay we'll be using this s later so now this is a case where there are no zeros now uh, where can we add zeros we can add zeros uh, at the beginning somewhere here or we can add zeros in the middle say after 1 5 zeros or before three two zeros sorry after three two zeros and we can add zeros at the end uh, i would take these two cases as one thing adding zeros in the middle and adding zeros at the end and adding zeros at the beginning will take it as a different case and uh, we'll take them case by case so suppose you're adding elements at the beginning so uh, say your array was three four one six two and you're adding say zeros out here now is this case any different from our original case the case we considered without any zeros no this case isn't different the reason is that what you want to do is you want to make all the first n minus 1 element 0 now the first few elements are already 0 so you don't have to care about them you can just ignore them you can just probably delete them also whatever you want to do you have to just care about the other elements which are non zero and you can apply the same procedure because there are no zeros in between of these things that is my assumption in case one case one is the uh, zeros if there exist they exist only at the beginning so by case one you have got that any zeros at the beginning can be removed like they don't matter you can just ignore them now suppose you have zeros in the middle so this is your case two say three four zero one six zero zero two now this case is slightly different from the original case in the original case uh, where there were no zeros what we were doing is we were taking this equals i equals one this equals i and this equals j and we were applying the operation now we were able to do that there because there was no zeros out in middle but now there are zeros in middle so you cannot do that operation directly you have to think of something else to do out here so what you can do the suppose you start from the first element the maximum j you can take will be the element with the first zero the reason is that if you take any other element say you take j equals this that cannot be done because this zero will come in the middle so you cannot apply the operation because the operation was saying as you can see all the elements between these two indices including the first index should, should be strictly greater than zero the first index also because uh, you know if you do the operation then ai will become minus one which uh, shouldn't happen so uh, if you take any element after the first zero then you cannot apply the operation so in the maximum case you can take the element at the first zero to be j now you can apply the operation once what that would do is it would make the zero non-zero now because this would reduce this by one and the other elements remain unchanged and this would make this one so now one thing which you have accomplished is that we have made a zero non-zero so now our j can be more than the initial value because uh, 
now it need not be this it can be one also it can be six also again we stop at the position where zero comes again so we can do the same procedure again because there are non negative elements before so again you do the same thing again you uh, you know here in this case if you take you put your i to be this and j to be this so this becomes one this becomes one so you can you have to basically do this for every element which is zero and why is this happening why are we trying to do this the major reason is that i want to apply this operation between i is equal to the first non zero element and the last element so i want to do that operation ultimately so i can do that only if there are no zeros in between so if there are zeros in between i'm trying to make them non zero so ultimately after doing this operation sufficient number of times you will arrive at a case where there are no zeros existing there might be zeros at the beginning uh, say what might happen is say this is 2 now now if you make this thing uh, zero uh, if you make this thing positive this will reduce by 1 so this becomes 1 and this becomes 1 in the next case now this is the next zero so you apply the same operation now this becomes zero and this becomes one but we actually don't need to care about this zero because it's at the beginning it's at the before of all non zero elements because if there exist elements here there will be zero only because what we have assumed is our three is our first non zero element so uh, you do this operation zero uh, suppose the number of zeros in the array is say k you do this operation k times to make all the non zero all the zero elements non zero after that you arrive at a case very similar to the first case in the case which we discussed here where our answer should be s that is the sum of the non zero elements now one also other thing you can observe is that the sum is actually not changing while you are doing these k operations the reason is that you are subtracting one from a place and you are adding one to the same place a uh, to another place so the net change is zero and you are doing this all these operations between zero to uh, sorry one to n minus one so this sum is not actually altering because see you are taking any two indices you are decreasing one by one and you are increasing the other by one so it's minus one plus one and it's zero so our sum will remain the same after doing these k operations also so by our initial case to do that uh, the case we have just obtained it would take uh, s number of operations where s is the sum and we have already done k operations to make the zeros non zero so the total number of operations would be s plus k i hope that was clear uh, i made it slightly clumsy out here drawing lot of arrows and all I hope you got the point so you can see the code out here so i take the input uh, read a comma and takes the array as input i take a uh, pause pause is basically storing the position where the first non zero element occurs i store it to some negative value initially uh, the reason will become clear uh, in the next step so if a of i is not equal to zero then i make pause equals one i basically that's the first non negative element and i break so if pause is minus 1 when will this happen this will happen when it does not enter this if condition always that is all elements are zero so if all elements are zero elements from 1 to n minus 1 are also zero so the task has already been accomplished so you need to do zero number of operations now if pause when n minus 1 that is the last element is non zero but our condition is that we need to make the first n minus 1 elements non zero whatever the last element is we don't care so the first n minus 1 elements are still zero so our task is accomplished so we put it make it zero so now i take a sum variable to find the sum and zero to find the number of zeros from pause to n minus 1 i am not including the last element because uh, as i told you we don't really care about the last element i take the sum and if something is zero then if a of i is zero not a of i is true and i increment the zeros so i print sum plus zero okay so now let's move ahead with uh, problem c the problem c was uh, 
nice problem it was you have to think slightly i would not say very hard but yeah you have to think slightly for the problem so uh, what the question is that uh, okay let me just draw something here suppose you have a string you have a string of length n given initially say a b a d and you are given two in two things uh, two integers l and r what you have to basically do is you have to find the substring between the integers l and r say l is equal to uh, 2 and r equals 4 so you are supposed to find the substring between these two things and you are supposed to append that thing at the end of the string so in this case suppose l and r are 2 and 4 so you append b and b a d so you have to do this procedure c times copy paste operation c times now uh, also note that the length of the string in increases after this operation like we are adding b a d out here so initially the length was 4 now after adding these three characters the length is 7 so you do this thing c times then you are given q queries given an integer k determine the kth letter in the final string so you will be given letter k you have to find what is the kth letter so uh, first thing you have to understand is you cannot form the string as how they have uh, told like you cannot store the string as after doing these many operations the reason is that in the worst case what might happen in the worst case suppose my string is uh, a b a d itself my l might be 1 my r might be the length of the string what would happen is it would take the substring between one and the last element which is basically the entire string and it would append it again basically it's duplicating the string again now one thing you have to be uh, take care is that your length has changed now so my new l you have to do this operation c times so in the second operation what i can do is i can take my l to be the first one and i can take my r to be this uh, final length so whatever the string you have got now you double that again and you keep doing the same thing again and again so suppose say the initial length is l you double it becomes 2l then it becomes 4l and so on uh, you do this c times so it becomes 2 power c into l and uh, you see c is given to be 40 so 2 power 40 into initial thing can be 2 into 10 power 5 so that will be uh, of the order of 10 power 18 so you cannot store a string of size 10 power 18 you wouldn't have enough memory to do so so we need to think of something else now the first thing that you need to observe out here is that suppose the kth cat uh, suppose there's a string k suppose say this is my new string and uh, my k is say uh, my kth character is somewhere in this string say my k equals 3 whatever i add behind this i add anything behind this it's not going to change k equals 3 it's not going to change the character at k equals 3 whatever i add behind the string the reason is that you're starting the counting from beginning of the string uh, as an analog you can think as uh, you're standing in a line so suppose you're the 10th person in the line and uh, say uh, there are people behind you and say some hundred people come behind you in the line you will still be the tenth in the line you're not going your position is not going to change so uh, whatever comes behind you does not matter because the counting begins from the front so whatever letter k uh, whatever k has been given if we know if the kth character has once occurred like k has k is less than the length of the string then that kth character will remain always so what is happening here is what we can do uh, is that after every copy operation we can store the length of the string length of the new string formed why uh, the motive behind this is that when we are given the integer k uh, to find the character at when the integer k had occurred say uh, between li and li plus 1 the integer k had occurred so we only need to consider the part from 1 to li from the first i indices of the first i uh, copying operations we just need to consider the string after uh, happened after that process the other part does not make a difference so having a 
array which will track the length of uh, each string after every copy operation is a beneficial thing. So how you would do that? You don't have to iterate from the beginning. What you could do is, suppose the uh, present length is L. Uh, suppose I would take a capital L because L has been given in the question. And you're adding some characters. You're adding characters between L and R. So you can see that the number of characters that are added are R minus L plus one. So suppose uh, my present length is L and I add L to R. So number of the new length is L plus capital L plus small uh, R minus L plus one. So you can write this in form of an array. Uh, let us call that a prefix array because I mean, why not? So prefix of I would be, uh, this is a new length L dash. So prefix of I would be prefix of I minus one plus R one, my R I minus L I plus one. R and L are changing every time. So the corresponding R and L, you could do this. So with this, you could track all the uh, lengths. Uh, we could see this by code also. I think it would be easier to follow. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, I take the prefix array. I initialize it. Be careful. Use 64 bit integers, either long, long or in 64 or else you'll get an overflow. So the first element prefix of zero initialized to the length of the string, uh, which would probably be useful ahead. We'll see that. And I take the input. I store the input in a vector. Why it would be uh, because we would have to use this ahead. Uh, we'll know, get to know that in a few steps. And I do the same thing. Prefix of pos equals prefix of pos minus one plus length. And I'm incrementing pos every time. So the prefix array is getting populated. And a len is basically r minus l plus one. Okay, so now we have got this a prefix array. Now we need to find the kth character. So uh, say our prefix array is uh, something like this. It's P1, P2, so on. PK, PK plus one and so on. Okay. Now, uh, the number has been given X. Okay. Uh, K was the number given. I used K here. So I'll use X here. So, and X is between these both. Okay. So, what we could do is, we just need to consider this part of the string. In this part of the string, x has not come to now. So this length, suppose this total length is pk. My pk is actually less than x, which is less than equal to, equality has to hold somewhere. We can put it either way. I'll put it here. Okay. So if you consider the string formed by p1 to pk, the character x hasn't come, but in the next time it has come. So the character X was added in this copying operation. Okay. Now, how do you get the character X? Now the uh, character X is basically an uh, character between this range L comma R of this new string or sorry of this old string. What I mean to say is the characters you're adding here is a substring of the old string. And you know that X is also a character between them. So to find X, what we could do is we could try to find the corresponding character out here. We'll take an example with say some values to make it more clear. Say my prefix array is something like uh, four, uh, 6, 10, and uh, say 13. A prefix array will be increasing, strictly increasing, because uh, you're adding some finite value every time, finite non zero value. And my say k equals or say x equals 9. And here my r equals say uh, 2 to 5. So what is happening here is if you take these characters out here, the characters which are getting added out here, there are four characters getting added. That's the reason it's becoming six to 10. You have 
six characters out here then you have characters 2 characters 3 4 and 5 okay now these are six characters this is the seventh character this is the third uh, eighth character this is the ninth character so what was ninth character in this big string is now the fourth character in this small string see how we have broken down the bigger problem into a smaller problem I would like to repeat or probably take another example to make myself clear uh, say our prefix array is something like 3, 5, uh, 8 and 10 and my character to be taken is 7 and this range is something say you need 3 characters so you can put 1, 2, 3 itself so you are adding what characters 1, 2 and 3 now here 5 characters have already come now you need the seventh character. So what is the second character from here is what you need. Why second? Because totally you need seven characters from here to here and five characters have already come here. Okay, so you need seven minus five characters in this L to R range. So and uh, the char this character is found where? In the old string. So what was seventh character in our bigger string the bigger string of uh, 10 characters is basically now only our second character in this old string of five characters now this old new might confuse you so i've taken two examples to see the, uh, tell you that thing so we had a bigger problem initially where we were finding the character at uh, for a bigger string now we have reduced the length of the string and we have uh, reduced the index also. Now, what we need to do is, we need to find the second character in this string. This is our new string now. What our new string is having only a prefix array of, uh, okay, I erased it, of three and five, because we don't need to care about this because the second character in this string will be the second character irrespective of whatever you add after that. So we need the second character out here and we can do the same procedure again and again. We can find where this character was lying and we can subtract it out here. In this case, it is smaller than three itself. So it was lying in the original string itself. So the second character in the original string is our key. But in a general case, what we could do is we could uh, break this bigger string into the smaller subsequence and we would have a smaller index and we would keep doing that until we come to the string which is the original string and then we could find the character. Now, uh, maybe the theory might look slightly complicated but when we see the code, it will become more clear. So, what I'm doing with the code is I'm taking the k as input for q uh, iterations now i'm running this thing for c uh, for c number of times the reason is that uh, i have copied it c times so what is happening is when i'm taking my k if my k is less than prefix of 0 what is prefix of 0 we took prefix of 0 to be n so basically when my k is lesser than the original string's length suppose my original string was 5 and i asked you what is the third character you would just say s of 3 or uh, since the characters have been given one index, you would say s of 2 and uh, say a ca string was of 10 characters and you would ask what is second character, you would say s of 1. So I say this uh, s of k minus 1 and I break out of the loop. Now suppose this is not happening. Now suppose my prefix of i is greater than or equal to k. What I am saying is uh, k has occurred long back. Okay, so I don't need to care about that. As I told you, we just need to care exactly where k occurs so that we can consider the part just before it. Okay, so if k is less than or equal to prefix of i, then what you do is you continue. 
uh, as I told you, we don't care about what happened there. Now, suppose k is greater than prefix of i. So we arrived at a situation where this is pk, and you have got your uh, sorry, I would say px. Sorry for using the variables interchangeably. And my k is greater than px, so it's somewhere around here. Okay. Now what you would do is now this k is coming in a range of l comma r. So the kth character in this whole string would be the k minus px character in this string. Why I say this? It's basically like suppose you have a string of say length 10 and you want to find the 8th character and if I take a range say 6 to uh, 9 so it is basically what it's the third character in 6 to 9 6 7 8 it is the third character in 6 to 9 so you have 5 elements out here so it's 8 minus 5 that is the 3 which is means it is the third character after this uh, initial substring so suppose I have got k, so it is k minus px character in uh, now it's k minus px character in this part. Now this part is basically having the length from L to R. So the first thing would be L, the second thing would be L plus 1, the third thing would be L plus 2. So what would be the k minus px thing? It would be L plus k minus px minus 1 or uh, this minus 1 wouldn't come why this is thing because the first character is l that is l plus 0 the second character is uh, l plus 1 the third character is l plus 3 so what will be the k minus px the character It'll be L plus K minus PX minus 1. Okay, uh, we can just check the minus 1 out here. So, L plus K minus PX minus 1 will be the K minus PX character in this part. So, now our problem is broken down. Now, we need to find this is our new K, K dash. This is our new string is, say H dash. And now we do the same thing. So, what I've done here is, I do k minus prefix of i. I do k plus vi dot first. vi dot first is basically storing the corresponding l and r. That's the reason I stored the vector initially so that I can use it again. So vi dot first is basically storing uh, this l. So what I do is I subtract px. I subtract px that is prefix of i and I add L minus 1 and this is my new k dash and I keep doing this thing again and again because uh, now our problem is is essentially the same but it's on smaller orders of magnitude so I keep doing this again and again and at any point of time if I find my k to be less than prefix of 0 that is my k is less than the initial length of the string I print the character so uh, when I see k less than prefix of 0, I print the character. Right, so I do this for q iterations. And if you see the time complexity for each thing will be O of c into q. Uh, c you can take say around 40 itself in the worst case. And some q, summation q is given less than 10 power 4. So it will be 40 into 10 power 4. So that is uh, less than you know 10 power 7. So you will get the accept. So yeah, that it from my side so thank you for uh, listening to the solutions and in case you really had any queries or uh, any suggestions over the video feel free to put them in the comments uh, thank you for watching